Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world. My name is Throwback Gamer, and today we are going to be doing another part in the Terraria item guide series, okay? Um, but not only are we going to be doing a guide to an item today, I'm going to be giving you the tour of the rest of my home and its area because I haven't 100% done all of it, right? And all the certain items I have and everything, right? But first, before we do that, we are going to do the item guide, alright? So, for today's item guide, let me go up here and show you what it is. It is this, um, furnace-looking thing right in front of me. This is called the glass kiln, okay? This allows you to make, um, certain items out of glass, as you can see here. Glass door, glass chair, glass dresser, table, clock, Bathtub, lantern, candelabra, I don't know how to say that, workbench, and the terrarium as well. The terrarium you don't need to be on the kiln to make, you can just use a crafting table to make a terrarium. Well, not a crafting table, this ain't Minecraft, this is terraria, it's much better. Um, but anyways, yeah, so basically, a glass kiln just allows you to make furniture out of glass blocks. Um, really the only thing they don't have here on here is a bed, is because I don't have the right materials for a bed right now. Um, but what I do think I'm gonna make out of this is a clock, right? This is the only area where you don't need any of the other materials for a clock, um, to make it. You only need glass with the glass cap, which I really like, okay? Oh, uh, I do already have a clock in this area, actually, so I'm not gonna put it in here. Um, let me see if I have any open space down farther in my house. Let me see here. Down here, bottom level, got any space? Not exactly. Um, if I, uh, remove this torch, I'll actually pop it in right here. Perfect. Check it. I love it. Very nice, indeed. I love my glass glass clock <laughs> imagine how easily that would break in real life guys but as you all know this is a video game and things aren't very realistic all right so um i'm gonna put a, a couple things back in this chest well actually i'm just gonna put this uh this cobweb back in this chest and I'm actually gonna put a couple other items in some other chests real quick. This is my main chest room. I'm gonna put these golden tables. Because I just got hit with a pirate invasion um, before I started recording today. So I got some gold items as well. So that was pretty nice. Um, let me sort my inventory there. And I got four of those crimson mushrooms. I'm gonna put them in their pile. Perfect. Okay, guys, so, now that I've given you the guide to the glass kiln, I'm gonna show you around the rest of my area, alright? You've seen this before, but I haven't quite given you a proper introduction to it. This is my NPC house, alright? This house is every NPC in the game, except for my nurse. You can see my nurse on the mini-map up there. That nurse is up there. That, well, that nurse, there's only one nurse, but my nurse is up there, so I can basically just kill the Moon Lord whenever I want. That is right, guys. Putting the nurse up there in certain conditions, which I will show you soon, basically makes me have a Moon Lord farm. And I am not even kidding when I say that. Like, it is literally a Moon Lord farm. You can kill the Moon Lord easy as many times as you want, right? First, I'm going to check in with my tax collector guy here. He got six gold, 60 silver for me. That's pretty nice. Got a lens, and I'll even need that. Um, let me see here. I'm sorry, my game just lagged a little bit. Um, anyways, yep, all the NPCs in here except for the nurse and the mushroom guy, because the mushroom guy has to has, have his own special standards, um, to be an NPC. He, he thinks he's special, but he's really not. Right here, guys, I have a little roller coaster right here. Um, I got this, uh, minecart, even though I do not have an expert world, I went to an expert world and got all the materials for the special, like, laser minecart. This goes all the way over here to the desert. Ooh, there's a sandstorm. Maybe I can find one of those, like, uh, sand elementals. Oop, there's some sharks there. Oh, well. Oh, big boy. There you are. Okay. 
you can notice right now, I have the, um, the Meow Mare. I have a Rootless Meow Mare, which, um, the combination of a Rootless modification and the Meow Mare equals the highest damaging weapon in the game. Um, with the, um, armor that I have, it gives me a total of 365 damage per hit, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I was coming over here because I was thinking I could maybe get, find a sand elemental to kill, um, but I do not think that is going to be the case, guys. Why are you here? Oh, wait, there's a maybe there. Um, yeah, all I see are little meteor heads. Whoa, what are you? What are you? What are you? Is that a scorpion? Oh, you are, you're a scorpion. Sand something, I don't know which... I don't know what this says it is, but... Oh, there's another sand thresher. Alright, we're not gonna stay down here. We are actually just gonna go... Uh, hey, hey, er, hey. Back off here. Right, we're gonna go ahead and teleport back. I got something here I've never seen before. Lamia wraps, okay? Um, I don't know what this is. Oh. It is a, um... Interesting. It's a, uh, it's a shirt that I can wear. I don't really like that. I like my adamantite press plate. I like the look of that. So I'm gonna put this, these new wraps that I just got in this chest here. Alright. Then, got some water loose. I'm gonna put that in my nature chest, right? Because I actually don't. Oh, wait. Do I have. Wait, is that a water leaf pile? Oh, that is a water leaf pile. Alright. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna go through, show you the rest of my house. Well, actually, I've showed you my house, but it's not the entire area, um, of my game and all the stuff that I've built, so. So I showed you this, uh, this NPC house, but over here, I've got a couple of spawn statues set up. So I've got, um, Piranha, Unicorn, Mimic, and, uh, Bird. Yeah, bird. I could I, I swap back and forth between the bird and the crab, but right now it's bird. And up here, this is my Moonlord farm, okay guys? So the reason this is a Moonlord farm, what you do is you take this bewitching table and you place it right here next to this campfire. The campfire gives you a healing effect, and so do these hearts so you can heal quicker. All you need to beat the Moonlord is the mythical, or you don't need a mythical, but you need the Stardust Dragon Staff, you need your nurse up here. And you need a couple of things to give your dragon more segments. What I would suggest is um, either a complete set of tiki armor or a complete set of stardust armor, okay? Um, one of those two kinds of things will increase, each one will increase uh, a segment of your dragon by one, alright? And also, try to get the pygmy necklace. That will increase it again, alright? So that will give your, um, if you have that and the bewitching table, that will give your dragon, um, an, a total added of six more segments, alright? To put it at seven segments in total, alright? And then all you do is sit down there, heal with the nurse over and over, and let your dragon kill the moon lord. It shouldn't take more than four minutes, I would say. It's really quick and really easy, right? So up here, um, this was a failed experiment before I figured out how to um, actually kill the moon lord. Um, but this used to be a path that I made when I was going to fight the moon lord once before, and I almost fell through there. Um, yeah, this was a failed experiment of trying to beat the moon lord. But up here, this is something I use all the time. This is an event arena that I built for, um, well, for more difficult events like a frost moon or a pumpkin moon. All right. Um, but that's that, alright? So I'm gonna go back down, actually, because I ain't got nothing out. That path does continue, but it just ends shortly after, so there's no need to go through there. I'm gonna fall down here, alright? And, uh, there's one more, uh, item or area in my house that I want to show you guys, alright? Well, not in my house, but in my world, okay? I'm gonna go over to the left here, right, past my homemade crimson biome, which you guys have seen before, past my mushroom guys biome, oh, I'm sorry, I don't really need that, over here, this is my, uh, this is my 
living wood tree of my server. This right here is the place that I use to fight the old one's army. All right, this is what I the area I use to fight the old one's army. Um, I, I'm I, recently I really don't have any need to fight the old one's army anymore. Um, I've gotten all of the trophies that you can get from the mini bosses in there. I have the um, ogre trophy, and I have like the like the weird uh, like genie floating on the carpet trophy. I don't know what that thing's called. Um, I think I might. Oh, almost went down there below my biome. I think I'm gonna go take a look to see um, where I have that banner because that's a really cool one. Um, and. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show you guys besides that banner is that I forgot to show you a couple more, right? Right here, um, directly above me, which looks like a, uh, I don't know, I guess you could call it a brown cookie or like a throwing star. This is the Gollum banner, alright? That took me a, a pretty decent amount of tries to get. And then over here, this uh, very meaty tongue that resides directly, nope, don't dash that resides directly above me is the Wall of Flesh Trophy. It's, um, it's pretty gross, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then the one other thing, I wanted to show you guys the trophy um, for that uh, genie guy. I can't exactly remember where I have that, but it's somewhere here. I don't want to turn... Oh, there it is. You can barely even see it. So this is it, right above me. It's this book, alright? I'm gonna break it to see, remember what the mob is called. Um, Dark Mage Trophy, right. The book itself is actually, um, so big that you can't even really see the background wooden trophy part. It's, it's really interesting, right? Um, but I actually have one more thing that I wanted to share with you guys, alright? You probably noticed by now- Hey, get out of my house. What are you doing here? You probably noticed by now that also this weapon right here that I use, uh, I've used a couple times in the playthrough. This is called the Solar Eruption, right? I have a demonic version, which is one of the best. Gives plus 15 damage, plus 5 critical strike chance as well, right? And this weapon right here is called the Terrarian. It's the best, uh, yo-yo in the game, alright? It, I have the godly modification, we have plus 15 damage, plus 5 critical strike chance, and plus 15 knockback, right? And the reason um, the yo-yo that is actually that good is because I have a yo-yo bag and a jagged version of that, so it does plus 1 damage, right? Um, but what I was going to say before I remembered something else, you've noticed that I, I always dash a lot by accident, and that's just not a normal thing you can do in the game. You have to have this thing right here at the bottom, alright? Look in the bottom right hand corner. It's called Master Ninja Gear, alright? This allows the ability to climb walls and dash, and it gives a chance to dodge attacks. What that is, if an uh, enemy goes by you or tries to hit you, it'll create a poof of smoke sometimes, and it will uh, just you won't take any damage, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, so if you just double tap D or A, depending on which way you are, you'll just dash like that. Right? So that's pretty nice. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Terraria. If you liked it, if you found the information useful about the glass kern, uh, glass kern that's not what it is, glass kiln, um, then please smash that like button and the subscribe button as well, and I will see you guys in my next Terraria episode. Goodbye.